colour specialist and we are here this evening to talk all things colour. So I'll quickly run through how our session will sort of roll out. So for those that are joining us for the very first time, I welcome you. And for those that are our regular viewers, um, fantastic to have you here again. So the session runs like this. For the first half an hour, I will be in front of the camera um, talking all things colour, answering all of your frequently asked questions, certainly talking um, projects and talking about our wonderful portfolio of products that we have designed to protect and beautify your space. So once we uh, finish um, streaming live, so I usually sit behind the um, computer for the next half an hour or so after that to answer any further questions. And then that is a fantastic time if you do have any photos or images that you would like to share with me um, to pop them into the feed then because while we're streaming, unfortunately you are unable to um, upload any images. But don't let that stop you from uploading any questions because that's what we're here for. We're here to answer all of your questions. So use this time as an opportune time to have a bit of a voice if you like. So as I mentioned before, tonight is all about frequently asked questions. And I do have quite a few questions in front of me um, that have been sent in today. So thank you very much to everybody that has popped their questions into the feed earlier on. Um, and also what we do is we look at all of our social media feeds and uh, we collate the most frequently asked questions so that we can um, bring those to light for you. So I'm going to start this evening. <clears throat> Excuse me. So our first question this evening comes from Annette. So thank you very much, Annette, for popping your question into the feed earlier. And also thank you for sharing your images. So I hope you're with us this evening um, so that you can hear what we're going to answer with. But your question is, what colour or treatment would you suggest in a kitchen that has cream cupboards and badly rendered walls. Would you paint the cupboards? Um, I'm replacing the tiles. The ceiling is wooden raked with beams. It's not changing. And cream brick inside with stone rock in large living area. Okay, so thank you very much, Annette. So I did manage to have a look at your images, which has um, been fantastic. It certainly allowed me to, um, you know, take on the visual of what's happening. So look, it's entirely up to you whether you choose to paint your um, kitchen cupboards and I guess it's what you're wanting to achieve. So if you're wanting to achieve a fresh new look, I think it would be highly desirable to do so. Um, and it depends on whether you wanna paint it the same sort of color as the wall or whether you're wanting to have a contrast. If you are listening, please pop something into the feed. I'd, I'd love to know a little bit more. But I'll work with what I have here and um, I think that if you're working with um, a cream brick, it would be nice to see a white that has a little bit of warmth to it. So depending on the um, strength, if you like, or the, the amount of um, color you're wanting in your white, so to speak, depends on, you know, that's going to give you quite a few options. So I immediately think if you're wanting just a beautiful white that's going to work um, within that space and it's not going to have a huge amount of color, so to speak. Torbman's Crisp White is our number one white and it is a fantastic white. I have it throughout my entire house. Um, walls, ceilings, doors and trims, apart from where I've chose to have um, some feature color and obviously um, some color by way of colored doors. But Crisp White is the most beautiful white and it will work in, I'm just going to get it up here, it will work in many environments and whether you've got a space that has a lot of natural light or whether you have a space that lacks light this is very very forgiving and very adaptable so this is what crisp white looks like it's the top white there oops that's a bit better so i direct you to have a look at that if you're working with cream and you're wanting something with a little bit more color so to speak you could go two ways it depends on the level of cream to your bricks if you like so I mean you can I, that can be interpreted in quite a few different ways so I just want to make sure that we have um, I'll give you a couple of options just so that you've got something that's going to work whether it's really really creamy or whether it's creamy with some other undertones happening so another color that would work extremely well is a color and you can see how well loved my fan deck is here that's the third color down. It is called Alpine Snow. It is the most beautiful white. It almost sits a little bit more on the neutral side, um, but again, very adaptable and will work within that space. If you're wanting something that has a little bit more color, 
let me just see there's a beautiful color called aria white and i'm not going to be able to find it just because i want to find it right now i may have to look it up uh, just bear with me i'll quickly look at the index i should know where this sits i'm using it quite a lot lately i think it is just a divine color and we are seeing whites tend to um, starting to warm up now so moving away from really really cool cool whites to whites that have a little bit more warmth to them so this is something that i think could work really really well okay here it is here so this is the second color down that's the color there called aria ivory i'd have a look at that as well so crisp white aria ivory or alpine snow are really good colors to first start um, your color journey with what i would recommend doing and i say this all the time and this is extremely valuable is to Go into, say, your local bunning store where they have... Um, so when our paint comes into store, it comes on pallets. And in between each layer of paint is what's called a pallet liner. So a really large piece of cardboard. So go into Bunnings, talk to one of the team members there, ask for one of the large pieces of cardboard um, and cut the piece of cardboard. So you're wanting to have a sample piece to be a metre by a metre. Um, grab yourself a sample pot of each of the colours that I've recommended tonight and then brush out three coats of each color on individual meter by meter square pieces of cardboard. And the reason I'm saying three coats is generally our, um, our products, if I'm talking about Endure or Easy Coat or something like that for your broad wall interior, is a two coat system. But because we're going on to cardboard, we're going to use one coat and that's going to kind of aid as an undercoat. So three coats will give you fantastic coverage um, and it's going to allow you to see you know a true representation of the color now when you are trialing this in your space there's two areas that i would recommend to trial so you've got your wall you've got your ceiling you're going to pop the piece of cardboard on the wall here right up close to the ceiling and that way you can see um, how it looks in your space in natural light but also try it of an evening when you have um, your artificial lighting on so you can see how the color is going to play within your environment um, also to trial it so you've got your wall you've got your floor trial the sample down near your floor up against the wall here and that way you can see because things like your um, flooring and um, furniture etc anything that you have within that space can um, influence your wall color so it's really important to test it in those two spots and it will help you to understand how that white's going to play within your space now for your kitchen cupboard doors and surrounds, if you choose to paint it, um, it depends on what you're wanting to achieve, whether you want the um, cabinetry sort of to meld into the wall color, um, which can help to create the illusion of more space or whether you're wanting to have the, um, the joinery stand out. So, I mean, I would personally like to see, I think having looked at your photos, um, I think that you could um, paint the joinery the same color as your wall color. And I think it's going to just give you a beautiful lift to your space. So if you choose to paint your cabinetry, I would recommend we have a range of products um, that are from, so under, obviously under our PPG brand. So it's a white night product. So it's a tile and laminate paint. And there's a whole system there. So you need to, I think it's a, a three step system. So you're going to need to um, clean first and then you're going to need to prime and then you top coat. So I will pop a link into the feed at the end of this um, that can show you or direct you towards that product range. So you, and then you can find out more information about how you can renew your um, joinery because it's a fantastic system and you'll get some fantastic results. So I hope that helps. Um, if you're wanting any more information, please pop something else into the feed and I would be very happy to um, answer some more questions for you. Thanks, Annette. Okay, what's our next question here? We have, um, and thanks for your comment that these lives are so interesting. That's lovely to hear. Okay, so I do have another question here from Numi. So thank you, Numi, for joining us and thank you for your question earlier on this evening. So how can I tell that my house wall has three layers of paint? It seems like two layers. So I guess each um, 
paint layer if you like they measure it by the microns um, and you need a certain amount of microns to have adequate um, coating or coverage and so if you're I guess I can only assume that if it's seeming like you have two layers and um, would I be correct in guessing that perhaps some of the um, the gyp rock etc is sort of like the grayness of the gyp rock is coming through your color um, or you can see the gyp rock through your paint it looks patchy if that is the case it's going to certainly need um, some more paint some better coverage so if it's bare gyp rock it's a coat of what we of um, Torman's 3-in-1 because gyp rock contains a lot of tiny little pinholes and the 3-in-1 has exceptional filling properties so you're wanting to ensure that when you're painting new gyp rock or if you're renovating and you're patching etc any gyp rock needs to be undercoated first so a coat of that's going to help to fill um, any tiny pinholes and give you a smooth even surface if you like creating when you paint you're going to have um, I guess a, I could say an even distribution so it's not going to um, penetrate more into a surface there or there and, and result in sort of patchiness so using something like three in one first and then it'll be two coats of a um, top coat of a broad wall interior something like Torben's Endure is fantastic and it also comes down to ensuring that you're getting that adequate um, coverage if you like and film build is also going to come down to the tools that you use when you're applying your product so something like a Torman's Enjoy you're really going to want to use a really good roller that has a nap of say something around about a 10 to 12 mil nap for interior broad wall and that's going to ensure that you're getting a really good even distribution and you want to make sure that when you're rolling you're not spreading it out too far you still want to be able to hear this is going to sound crazy but a little bit of sort of you want to be able to hear it almost slurping as you're painting on to the wall um, if you're rolling it out too thin and the roller's not making any noise and it's very dry that's going to certainly leave you with an uneven film build and a patchy sort of um, finish so I hope that helps if you're after any more information please pop something else into the feed and I'll be very happy to answer some further questions for you okay hi Alison Thank you very much for joining our session and thank you very much for your question earlier on so your question is what white do you recommend for an interior paint okay so it depends on um, look, we've got the most beautiful um, collection of whites but obviously it depends on your environment as to which whites going to work best so if you have a space that is saturated with a lot of natural light a white that is cooler will tend to work better in that environment if you have a space that lacks a lot of natural light you're going to want to have a white that is slightly warmer because it's going to warm up that space for you if you were to put a, a cooler based white into that sort of space it can look really gloomy and dull so I guess it depends on um, what the area what your space is um, I can certainly recommend I would recommend Torben's Endure all the way it is a fantastic product um, and then for some colors certainly I recommended or talked about earlier on tonight um, Torben's crisp white it is our number one white and it is a very adaptable white so whether you have areas that have a lot of natural light or areas that lack um, a lot of natural white you'll find crisp white will work really really well some other whites that you can um, use that I would recommend you can certainly have a look at a color called um, cotton ball so cotton ball crisp white um, <clears throat> excuse me if you're wanting a cooler white Torman's Miss Universe is a fantastic cool white you could certainly use that as well um, that's a start I'm just trying to think and again if you're wanting something that has a little bit more color Torman's South Pole and I can show you what I'll do is at the end of this session I will pop some of the whites into the feed that I have recommended tonight and that way everybody can see links to these colors um, Alison if you'd like some further information please pop something else into the feed and I'll be very happy to answer some more questions for you okay so the next question that I have is from Roger Sharp thank you Roger for your question earlier on this evening so I understand that live color is about paint colors but I also follow the renovation that Torman's does 
That's great to hear, thank you. I was wondering if someone could give my wife and I some advice. All of our bedrooms are carpeted, our hall and living areas are tiled in an almost white color. Would it look stupid if we remove the carpet and put a timber look floor in the bedrooms? Okay, so thank you very much, Roger. So you've got um, a dark carpet and you've got a beautiful, almost white colored tile. So there's two ways you could go about it. So firstly, no, I think that you could certainly um, put a timber look or timber into the bedrooms and I think it could work really, really well. So you could certainly go for, I'm just thinking and visualizing, if you've got sort of white floor tiles, you could go for um, a white timber look. So a bleached out white sort of timber look would work really, really well. Um, or you could also go for a darker version. So you could use something almost like a, a really, oh, I'm thinking if you've got dark carpet now, you could go could go dark with sort of a charcoal undertone could work extremely well as well. I guess it also depends what else you have within the space. So um, if we're just talking with um, having white sort of tiles, it it's things that like, um, depending on how far the tiles go through, what else is um, within the space? What other colors exist? So are there any, other, what colors are the walls at the moment? Um, and sort of what are there any dark sort of colors existing within that space? I'm, I guess, Roger, I'm just trying to visualize so I can give you, you know, a firm suggestion if you like. But at this point in time, um, a sort of a bleached out white, I think would work extremely well. Sort of almost a lime, a limed sort of washed um, white floor could look fantastic. Um, but then on the reverse as well, a deeper toned floor could work as could work really well as well, depending on other colors that are within your space. So if you can come back to me at some point, Roger, with um, letting me know of any other colors that exist or any other tones that exist within your space um, to help me visualize a little bit further, I'd be happy to give you some further um, advice. Thank you. Okay, what else do we have? I've got lots of um, technology happening here. Um, okay, so, hi Monica, thank you very much for joining us. Okay, so, let me just read out what you've written for us. Hi Fiona, thanks so much for this live advice. We are building a beautiful James Hardy weatherboard home and our builder is using Tolman's. That's lovely to hear. Um, we are about to go into selections, but I'm looking for a beautiful white that I can use for interior and exterior that isn't cool or too blinding from the outside. We are sitting on top of a hill, but the sun will be hitting it in the morning from the front. Our roof will be shale grey colour bond and our gutters will be using colour bond surf mist. Thank you so much. So, so far I've been looking at Whisper White. What are your thoughts on this? Okay, so let me just have a look here. I do have Whisper White here, I'm pretty sure. I guess it, there's a few things to take into consideration. So let me just give you an example. So for me at my house, I have um, Surf Mist on the exterior with a couple of other, other colors. But I also have um, crisp white on the interior. Now, when I sit in my office here and I look at my white walls, white ceiling, etc., and then I look outside and I'm looking out to um, our extension where we've got a, a new garage, which is um, done in James Hardy Sky on Linear Weatherboard, and that is surf mist. When you're looking, you cannot tell the difference because it looks your um, surf mist... Um, Obviously, outside, full sun can look really, really white, like it can, the color can bleach out. So I guess it's to be mindful that when you're using the same color outside and then bringing it inside, it can sometimes, um, it's going to, um, it's, so if I were to use surf mist that I've got outside and bring it inside, it's going to look darker inside. And so it's not going to look the same. So I guess that's something to take into consideration and then using a light white inside and then putting that light white outside again you know in full sun the color the white can bleach out so to speak and become quite glary so I just thought I'd make that sort of um, or bring that to life because that's what can actually happen so I guess it's being mindful of how that white um, Monica that you want to use inside and then bring outside how it's got, how it's going to perform outside in full sun 
And that brings me back to, you know, how I mentioned earlier on this evening in the session, and I talk about it every single session. I sound like a broken record, but it's that need to sample the color so you get an understanding of how it's going to look outside in full sun. Um, even if it's just getting, as I mentioned before, a piece of cardboard, a large piece of cardboard, meter by meter square, brushing out three coats of the color, and putting it outside in full sun and having a look at how it's going to um, adapt, work, play, etc. And then having a look internally how it's going to adapt, work and play um, up near the ceiling here and then down near the floor, um, up near the ceiling under natural light and also um, under artificial lighting of a night and then down near the floor taking into consideration what other elements are going to exist within your design, whether you're going to have a floor, wooden floorboards, etc. just to see how that white's going to be influenced. So I think that's something to take into consideration. I mean, I love the fact that you've got your, um, let me just have a look here. We've got Surf Mist and you also have, uh, let me just have a look here. Surf Mist and I think it was Shale Grey. I knew that. Just It took a moment for my um, mind to kick back in. Okay, so Surf Mist, Shale Grey. There's another color as well. Um, and yes, I do think Whisper White's a beautiful color. I would just certainly um, trial it outside just to see how it's going to work for you. The other color that may be worth having a look at as well is a color called um, South Pole. It's, a, it's along the same lines or it has that same sort of undertone. I don't know if I hold this up whether you're going to be able to see it very well, but I'll give it a whirl. It has the same undertone as, oops. There we go there. It's um, the lighter one, the square behind. So the I've got your Surf Mist there. That's um, South Pole there and obviously your Shale Grey. That's another color that I would certainly have a look at and see whether you think something like that would be suitable for yourself. But again, I would certainly have a look at how it's going to work on the exterior. And once I finish here, um, I'll pop a couple more suggestions, Monica, into the feed for you. Okay, hi Charlotte, thank you very much for joining us this evening. So what should I be taking into consideration when selecting a gray for my color scheme? That's a really, really good question, Charlotte. So I guess the way I like to explain gray is um, that greys tend to sit in four categories. So you've got a blue based grey, you've also got a red or purple based grey, you've got a brown based grey which could be referred to as greyish, um, and then you've got a green based grey which is sort of what we refer to as neutral. So whenever you're embarking on a grey journey so to speak, I like to sort of start within that green based gray and the reason being is it's very um, adaptable and easy and it's almost defined as well I define it as um, a neutral so and the same with the whites the whites that have sort of that slight greeny um, gray beige undertone of what I define as a neutral and they're very adaptable as are your grays so when you begin your gray journey have a look at your grays that tend to have that green gray and um, um, greeny gray undertone and a, a really good example let me just see if I can find something here is a color called um, foxdale and it's actually something that that's what I actually have behind me and I know that lighting is going to make it look um, probably a little bit different but this is um, Foxdale here and then the one above is called Eagle Crest but they are what I would define as your um, neutral based greys and so neutral green based grey and really really easy to work with very adaptable and it's a great place to start when you're embarking on your grey journey. Um, I hope that helps Charlotte if you do have any more questions please pop them into the feed and I'll be very happy to answer them for you. Um, hi Sarah Hi Fiona, I just missed the white paint advice so would love the links as well. No worries Sarah, I'll pop a lot of links into the feed once we finish streaming and also to Monica, as I said before, I'll pop in some colours for you as well. 
Okay, so what Sarah's also asking, what white would you recommend to go with a monument tiled roof? We have a 1940s weatherboard home that gets full sun. Okay, so I say this all the time, but a really good white and a really good starting point is surf mist. And look, most of the um, color bond colors have been designed to work really, really well together. You can see that there. So you've got monument and then you have surf mist. And um, surf mist in full sun will have a tendency to bleach out and look quite white. It looks fantastic. It's the most beautiful white. Um, so I'd send you to have a look at that. There is another color um, by Taubman's as well called Gazebo White, which is a beautiful white again. It has enough um, tint or undertone to withstand full sun. And here's another tip. If you're looking for, if you're embarking on... Um, a white journey and you're unsure of how they're going to perform in an external environment there's something that um, I like to refer to so every color has what is called an LRV which is a light reflectance value and so when you're um, starting your color journey you can go to www.tormans.com.au and you can go down to um, colors and click on that and you'll find that all of our colors are grouped by family and from that, you can click on colors and each color has an LRV, so the light reflectance value. So zero is black, 100 is white. So obviously, the lighter you go, the more um, reflective, the darker, more absorbent. So when you're working um, with whites externally, I like to look at whites that sit at around about 65 to 75 for full sun. Um, because I know that when that full sun hits it, it's going to have enough undertone or tint to withstand that um, without the need for walking outside and going, oh, I need my sunglasses. It's way too glary, but it still looks white. So there's a that's a great starting point for anybody. So, you know, you can hop onto our website, have a look at colors, have a look at the LRV, look for something that sits at around about 65 to 75 as a starting point. So just to give you an idea, I think it is that I'm looking at this now. Um, surf mist usually sits at around about, I think it's um, 67. So that gives you an idea when we're talking about the light reflectance value of colors. So I'd certainly have a look at surf mist. Also have a look at gazebo white. That sits at 71.2. It's a beautiful white and that certainly works extremely well again with monument. Um, and if you're wanting something that could potentially be a little bit warmer. Um, you could also look at, let me just, you could look at a color called Quill. I don't know whether it's going to have too much color for you. It just depends. Everyone's version of white um, varies, but I'll pop that up and just show you how beautiful that sits with um, Monument. And of course, I'll pop some of these, as I said, into the feed once we... So you can see second one down, a color called Quill, and that's sitting up against Monument. Now, again, when you're popping that out into full sun, it's certainly going to look um, a lot different than what it does under all of these lights inside. But um, again, I'll pop some into the feed when we finish. So um, I hope that helps, Sarah. If you do have any more questions, please pop them into the feed. I would be very, very happy to um, answer some further questions. Okay, so Roger, thank you for your advice. I'm a bit of a fan for bleaching. I feel the whiter look would be better. We have white walls apart from our media room, which is a dark charcoal. I will take a couple of photos and send them through after the live feed. Thank you, that'd be great. And then I can certainly help to, um, I guess, narrow down or, or help to pinpoint a little bit more um, as to sort of what tones to start to look at, Roger. So thank you very much. Um, I think that has almost, looks like we are pretty well bang on around about 8.30. So I think that's all of our questions. I'll just double check before I conclude our session. Yes, it does look like that's it for the moment. So for everybody that has joined us this evening, thank you very much. Um, I do appreciate you joining us for our session and I do appreciate um, all of your questions. I certainly will... Um, for Monica and Sarah, thank you for your questions and I will come back to you and pop a few more um, colors.
color suggestions into the feed now. Um, so yes, thank you everybody for joining our session tonight. Um, we will be back same time, same place next week again. Um, so until then, have a fantastic week. And as I always like to say, happy painting everybody and we'll see you again next week. Thank you. Good night.